Hey guys, welcome to my onboard race footage of Low Gap 2023. This is a uh, gravel race that's part of the Grasshopper Adventure Series up in Northern California. There are five races total in the year. This is the first one of the year. It's a shorty, it's 44 miles, but it's a toughie. It's about 6,000 feet of climbing this year. This is, uh, they had to do a different route because of the rains that happened in January this year. So it has about a thousand extra feet of climbing from the normal route, still about the same amount of distance. But the really tough part of this one is that it starts with a just brutal 20 minute climb or, or more like 25 or 26 minute climb for most of us uh, right off the gun. And so uh, we're just doing a little lead out here and we'll get to that climb shortly. Unfortunately, uh, my GoPro really didn't enjoy the cold and I knew that I was only gonna have about an hour of footage to, to work with today, but I was only able to get about 27 minutes total. The battery just kind of conked out on me. So I had to be judicious about where I used it, but unfortunately was only able to capture footage in the first half of the race. And that ended up being mostly the asphalt tarmac portions of the race here. So only got a tiny snippet of dirt that we'll see at the end. Um, so apologies for that. But as you'll see, we just uh, did the rollout here. It is a mass start. And um, the reason that they don't do it in waves uh, based on categories or um, you know pro versus cat one, two, three, four, uh, and, and all the rest is because there's issues. Apparently the organizer said there are issues with timing where if they do that, uh, because the race is so short, everybody will just end up bunching up on some of the descents. Either I can't remember if it's off the first ascent or off the last ascent. It's going to create a problem. So their solution is to stick a gigantic climb right in the front uh, of the race, and that will just have people naturally uh, space out. So. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. We're just sort of pedaling along here. Nobody's in too much of a rush. We know that the, the big climb is coming up. Um, so let's uh, skip ahead and um, get to a little bit of pain and suffering here. All right, so we're just heading up on, just about to start on the first climb here. You'll see this guy right in front of me uh, with the colored uh, saddlebag. This is my buddy who I came to the race here with. Uh, we're both uh, looking to basically just do better than we did last year. We both did this uh, race last year and to try to keep a consistent enough pace that's maintainable for you know each of us to, to carry throughout the race. It's a lot easier said than done because you start with this big giant climb and you really get super excited. You want to just sort of go all out and pass everybody you possibly can. But it's really easy to overexert yourself, especially so early in the race. And you've got, like I said, I think you have about 6,000 feet of climbing. So there's really, you know, a lot that you have to leave in the tank while also making sure that if you want to set up yourself for a good time here, that you actually, you know, put out a solid, solid effort on this climb. So again, you know, you can see just the product of having a mass start and trying to get through everybody on this climb. Um, you know, there's people of all different uh, skill levels on the climb and, and fitness levels. It's, you know, it's January. Um, so there's a lot of people who are just coming right out of winter training or people who have just picked up the bike for the first time in January. And so you have a huge variety and there's a lot of uh, folks that you've got to navigate if you're trying to get up through this group here. The other issue is that uh, this year, they were very, very strict about the center line rule. They said that they would have, uh, they'd be filming at various locations along the race. And if anybody were to cross over the center line, they would be immediately disqualified from the race and their time would be struck from the record. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about disqualifications later on, but needless to say, you can see everybody's trying to do their best to uh, stay on the right hand side of that center line. They showed photos from uh, the previous year, the mass start, everybody was just completely uh, thrown all over the road. And it's really, it, it's a good thing. It, it's obviously hard to abide by when you're, uh, you know, in the thick of so many people going up this climb. But it is a good thing because this is an open road. This is a public road. And during the race, there were cars uh, coming and going 
in both directions, if you can believe it, uh, on, on the road here. So making sure that everybody, yeah, you can see Jared is just touching the line and just coming over as we're trying to pass all these folks. Um, you know, everybody was doing, doing their best to try to call out, you know, car back, car, car up, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's really tough when you've got, I think probably something like 600 people who are starting this race. So the climb here is, I want to say three, three and a half miles, something like that. And then it crests and goes into a little dip. You think you're done. Uh, and that's not the end of it. And then you've got a little bit more to go before the final descent. But it's really, it's not a terrible climb. It's, it's pretty gradual and it actually evens out uh, in a few places. Just the hardest thing, you know, as you can see here is just sort of navigating your way through just the, the thick of people. All right, so we made it over the top. The uh, the actual, the, the double peaks at the top there. You can see heart rate up almost up to 180. Definitely feeling it right now. Very happy for the descent. It's a little flat uh, at the top. It's not like completely um, downhill. So there's definitely some pedaling to be, to be done to make up some time here. And you'll see uh, this person right there. Oh. Uh, they are on a mountain bike and there's like a whole uh, variety of bikes that people ride out here. I'd say more more often than not, you'll get folks who are riding gravel bikes, um, more cyclocross style uh, rather than like the uh, adventure style gravel bikes. But there were some people out on hardtails um, with front suspension and, you know, they were a little bit slower on the, the asphalt. But then when it came time to some of the more uh, rugged gravel, some of the fire roads. There's a lot of chunky, um, chunky ground with you know big mulch piles. Uh, they were just ripping through, and it was you know feeling bone rattling and and really tough on a uh, fully rigid race gravel bike. So the goal here on the descent uh, was to try to link up with a good group. I had seen up in the distance there was a group let out. Uh, by another local team uh, from the Bay Area. And I wanted, basically my goal was to catch that group. They were, I would say, probably 30 seconds in front of me. And so I was basically just trying to hammer it as fast as I possibly could to catch them uh, before we got to the bottom of the descent and into the flats. And the reason is because there is a flat segment, uh, once we get to the bottom here, that's probably, uh, maybe 10 miles, uh, maybe less than that, five or 10 miles long, something like that. And if you are by yourself, um, or if you are uh, caught leading like a small group, um, it's it's just going to be a, a terrible time for you. And and if you you know care at all about your time in the race, um, which some people do, some people don't. Um, it's really going to make a big difference. So I knew that I wanted to sort of link up to a solid group of people that. Um, we could all pace line and uh, draft and really make short work of that um, flat section because that flat section is right before um, we all head into the, um, the first part of the dirt, which is uh, unfortunately, I only got probably um, like about a minute uh, or a minute and a half of that. So definitely taking some some risky moves um here and uh trying to to haul ass basically um the descent was really beautiful uh and and very fast um had some switchbacks here um but uh, uh for the most part the pavement was pretty good it wasn't uh, super wet um and was running uh 32c gravel tires the i think the, the specialized pathfinders that have that little smooth strip right in the middle um so uh you know going straight uh, was actually it, it wasn't uh it wasn't too scary i didn't feel like i was uh, missing for my my road bike here um and everybody i think had a little everybody was you know being a little bit cautious and so i was able to uh, you know because we're, we're on gravel bikes and you know we're not all on road bikes and this is a pretty quick descent and um and i think i was able to take advantage of that and, and move up quite a bit here 
So uh, let's just uh, watch this play out a little bit, and uh, we can see uh, how you know how successful I am at catching that group um, down below. So I end up catching up uh, to this woman who I think is actually part of that group that I'm uh, trying to catch up to, but everybody's so strung out that it's really hard to tell. You know, it's like you can't even see anybody in front of her. Um, but she was just so strong, had really great form. Um, I'm like trying to do whatever I can to get around her and she's just, just absolutely killing it. And I think, uh, you know, it's just the, the caliber of people at the race with 600 people, you're, you're bound to get a, a bunch of different uh, skill levels and, um, you know, a bunch of different types of folks who, um, you know, come from different disciplines and whatnot. But there were just some people that were so impressive. Uh, this woman definitely among them um, throughout the race. I was, I was very, very impressed in her descending skills. She was just absolutely killing it down here. And it is about at this time that I think I realize I've caught up with the group that I was going for. Those two guys in front of this woman, um, the one with the blue and, oh, and you can see one of those cars. That was just a random normal person uh, driving on the road here um, that we all were trying to look out for. Fortunately, there weren't too many cars, but they, they definitely showed up from time to time. The scary ones were the ones that were coming from behind us, coming, coming in the same direction as us. But anyways, yeah, so I, I uh, th this is the group that I had wanted to catch up with, um, that guy right there in the middle. Um, he was, uh, he's from a local team in the Bay Area and I figured he would be pretty strong and somebody, a uh, big dude, uh, somebody good to draft off of. So um, we are just about to get into the flat section here. And this is where you really wanna make sure that you had that good fast group. And uh, yeah, we will uh, bunch up here in just a minute and we'll, we'll get into some pace lining real quick. All right, here we are. The group has uh, kind of collected itself a little bit more here. I think that in total, we probably had around 10 to 15 people at its peak. Um, it wasn't super well organized, but there was definitely good momentum here and, and people uh, at least had a decent sense of how to draft. I think as in any race, there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm to go off the front except for a limited group of people. But, um, you know, we, we did what we could. You can see some cars up there going in the same direction as us. A little bit hectic, especially in the middle of a race when everybody is uh, going, uh, you know, a little bit frantic here. Uh, I checked it out and, it, and I think this flat section uh, in between the first descent and uh, the first bit of dirt is a little under seven miles. Then there's about a quarter mile or half a mile climb on tarmac that gets you up to the uh, hairpin turn. You can see on the map there um, in the bottom right, there's that uh, hairpin that we're coming up to. And that's right at the start of the dirt. And that's the second half of the race. It's about another 22 miles, 23 miles. So, um, but in this section, this is just where it really pays off to have a group of people that you can draft behind and that'll take, take turns at the front. You can see I'm trying to conserve energy here, really just doing a low, uh, I'm just coasting or just doing as, as low as, uh, as I possibly can. It's a little surgy um, with some, some of the lumps and bumps along here. But for the most part, the profile of this section is actually down. It's just like very slightly down um, and pretty quick, very beautiful and very cold. This is, you know, you can see some people opted for long bibs. Some people opted um, for short. Um, I think I did short bibs and long sleeves with like a, a jacket up top. 
and uh, this is probably the coldest part of the race uh, at the start it was in, you know in the 40s but at least it was in the sun um, at this part of the race it's all wooded it's kind of down in this canyon area um, and just yeah really uh, uncomfortably cold um, uh, but you know you're you're running as as, as hard as you can here so uh, it, it warms you up a little bit all right, let's skip ahead now to the end of the tarmac section. We'll, we'll take a look at the last little bit of uh, the climb before we get to the dirt. So here we've got the last little bit of tarmac ending a about a half mile climb, getting up to this hairpin, which is where the first feed station is. I don't think anybody here is stopping at it. Everybody's racing this one uh, in this group. And uh, this is right where my GoPro conked out. So next time I'll definitely have to get better batteries, but um, this is a really, really fun race. And if you're interested in um, really challenging yourself right at the beginning of the season in January, I highly recommend that this is a good one. Um, you'll get lots more of this. There's about 22 miles more of uh, gravel. So um, until next time, and um, yeah, hopefully we get better footage on the next one.